Alright, introduction. AWS Lambda is a service released for developer preview in April 2015. Some examples of the kind of things that you can achieve with Lambda have designed advanced materialized views out of DynamoDB tables, reacting to uploaded files on S3 and processing SNS messages or Kinesis streams. Uh, in short, you can write a stateless Lambda function that will be triggered to react to certain events or HTTP endpoints. In a way, it's the same platform as a service vein as Heroku. The key difference in how data or events for Lambda web requests for Heroku is delivered to your code and the level of granularity that you can achieve it in both cases, you write code that accepts some constraints in exchange for not having to do as any provisioning, updating or management of the underlying resources. Lambda opens up all kinds of possibilities and it can lower your costs at the same time. When running a job processing server in EC2, you're charged for the compute time for however long that your instance is running. Contrast that with Lambda, you only get charged while actually processing a job on a one, one millisecond basis. Basically that you never pay for any idle time. This makes Lambda a great fit for spiky or infrequent workloads because it scales automatically and minimizes costs during slow periods. The event-based model Lambda provides makes it perfect for providing a back-end for mobile clients, IoT devices, or adding no-stress asynchronous processing to an existing application without worrying too much about scaling your compute power. The current computing landscape for AWS looks crowded at first glance with EC2, Beanstalk, EKS, Lambda, Simple Workflow Service, and more, uh, more varying workload. Before you start on this lab, you should understand where Lambda fits in. EC2 is the most basic service. It only provides the instance with the base image while you supply the automation, configuration and code. Uh, it's the most flexible option, but it also requires the most work for you. Lambda is the complete opposite. It handles provisioning, underlying the OS updates, monitoring and failover transparently. You only need to provide the code that will run and specify what events should trigger your code. Scaling a Lambda function happens automatically, AWS provisions more instances as needed, and only charges you for the time that the function takes to run. Beanstalk is a platform as a service that lets you deploy code without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. However, compared to Lambda, it does, does provide more choices and controls. You can deploy complete applications to Beanstalk in, in using a more traditional application model compared to deploying individual functions within Lambda. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk Container Service and the Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes are centered around containers compared to the individual functions of Lambda. ECS and EKS require less managerial overhead compared to running containers on EC2 instances, but it generally requires you to uh, have some operational expertise. Lambda is ideal for developers who just want to focus on their code. A simple workflow service is a coordination service and you must provision workers to complete your tasks. In this lab you'll set up a Lambda function, learn how to test the code in AWS console and discuss different event sources for bringing data into Lambda. Functions like the ones that you will write in this lab can be used to help keep data in sync, ban, ban out writes to users, news or feeds, uh, update indexes in DynamoDB and other databases. A Lambda function is a small unit of computation that can execute in parallel in a stateless fashion. This is only partially true though since you can potentially have some shared initialization code at the container level. In this lab step you will create a new function and play with it for the rest of the lab. Uh, in the management console search for Lambda. Right, no lambda functions exist, so we can create a function. In the create a function wizard, ensure that author from scratch is selected and enter the following values in the bottom form. Call it microwave reader node eighteen x. that fine permissions execution role needs to use an existing role the existing role is that uh, 
at the bottom of the page, create a function. Right, you're taken to the functions details page. Scroll down to the code source below. Double click on index MJS file on the left and replace the contents of the file with the following code. Right, you will learn more about the code in the following lab step. Click deploy at the top to save and deploy the Lambda function. Right, so in this lab step, you will create a Lambda function as well as the default execution role for the function. Uh, the role grants the function permission so that it can access other AWS resources. Lambda function is configured to use a Node.js runtime, although other languages are supported as seen in the runtime. So let's run the check. It's created. Uh, the Internet of Things has a wealth of applications uh, for AWS Lambda because most devices are low powered by design but they're also hard to update and need to be cheap enough to be embedded in fridges, toasters, televisions, robots, cars and more. All this of course without driving the cost of each device too high. You will use a microwave as an example, it will send you the cooking time, the button presses used to start the session uh, and information about the preset uses. Uh, AWS Lambda can receive these messages over uh, SNS. You can hook as many functions as you like into the SNS topic. For large scale IoT installations, you should consider a AWS IoT. Lambda functions are intended to be very simple. It makes testing, debugging, updating, and maintaining Lambda backends super easy. In the example function, you're going to collect information about if the user stopped the microwave before the time ran out and if a preset was used. This sort of information can help you improve the presets by collecting real-world data. Uh, the code that you used in the previous lab sends, uh, reads incoming SNS messages and passes the JSON body to be analyzed at line four. Uh, it then checks if the microwave was stopped before the requested number of seconds. And then finally, if the preset was not used or was used or not. Uh, you will test the function to verify that it works correctly in this lab. So, begin by creating a test event. So we need to configure a test event. Event name is stop without the preset. We need to copy our code. Uh, in a non-lab environment, the event body comes from the event source, such as SNS. Uh, for now, you'll just use the Lambda tester functionality and send in sample event data. The message property sets the cook time. There we go. So that sets the cook sex and the required sex also sets the commands uh, to the digits entered for the number of seconds followed by start indicating that a preset was not used. Click save at the bottom and now we can test. User ended the custom cook time early. There we go. Right in this lab step you've tested a lambda function and created the providing the test event. 
The event was configured to test the user stopping the microwave early with that preset. The function only returns a string based on the condition, but you could be counting incidents in DynamoDB, sending notifications to users, or any number of things. Of course, the cooking time on a microwave isn't incredibly interesting data. Cheap sensors make it feasible to collect all sorts of more interesting data and use Lambda to act on it in near real time. Uh, if you have extra time in your lab session, you can try modifying the test event to ex exercise different code path and check for the logs after running the test to confirm that everything has worked as expected. Be sure to leave a few minutes in the final lab step that validates the work that you did in this lab. Let's run my check. Was that it? That was it. 